Today we're making some stunning new Victorian Valentine's decor. Keep watching! I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. The first project is going to be a Cupid wreath. I've got these little tags that I thrifted that say love, and they're wood. We're going to, of course, need paint brushes because you know we got to paint something. I'm going to use this beautiful champagne gold paint. This beautiful little card. I know I said beautiful too much, don't I? Beautiful little card that is part of a banner that I got from Timu. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. I'm going to choose a couple of blue ribbons that I think might work. And then I have some random, some of these are thrifted, some of these are purchased, and these are just uh, some florals that match what's going on in that beautiful card. Okay, beautiful. I've said it three times, and we're not even one minute to the video. Yes. Lovely roses that I got from Timu. The quality is wonderful in these. Look at that. And then this I got on clearance somewhere. Think of Joanne. Yeah. And you can pull all these individual pieces out of here or cut them off. And then another one of these wreaths. Now, I did one at Christmas with the same type of greenery that I uh, changed the color up a little bit. I have several more of these left, so you will be seeing these wreaths again. Just giving you an idea of the measurements, 8 and 16. And then we've got the fluff, of course. Everything needs to be fluffed. These were stacked on top of one another and kind of mushed down. We're going to take these beautiful little, uh -huh, there's another one. We're going to take these love letters and we are going to paint those gold. Now, I gave three coats of this because I wanted it to be very noticeable. I could have stained these first, maybe done a dark brown and then did the gold over the top. But as I was building up the color, I just kind of watched to get it at the look that I wanted. So three coats was enough for me. And you could still see the wood grain a bit underneath, but, you know, that's pretty, and I love rustic, so it works for me. We're going to do all those and let them dry. While they're drying, we're going to address the little card here. And I've got a scrap piece of paper underneath. This is cardstock, and then another piece of, uh, I think this is, um, this came from a paper pack, the blue with the words on it underneath. I don't even know what the words say, but I like the color, and I think it, it matches well. So I'll use my double stick tape. You can use whatever adhesive you would like to put this card down on top of the sort of an old gold colored cardstock. But it really matches well with the aged look. So I think this was a good choice. Of course, use whatever you like. If you don't have a banner from Timu, what can you do? Well, you can go get a card that you like at Dollar Tree or at another store. Or perhaps you've been sent a card in the past and you've been hanging on to it. What a great way to get that card back out that you love so much. Give it a little more attention. Give it new life. So if you have a corner rounder and you have a round picture, all you have to do is clamp it and kind of snap the edges. I don't have a corner rounder anymore. I did back in my scrapbook days, but I donated most of that stuff. So I don't have one. So I'm just going to go go with it, just looking at it, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to offset it with the blue in the background. And look at the difference. That just, I love it. Now, of course, I'm going to be cutting off all of these. They're kind of um, leggy, I guess you could say, and I need these to be in shorter, more manageable pieces to use in a wreath. And actually, I left these a bit too long. I do cut these in half, each one of these. So what if you have a flower that's kind of crumpled? Well, you can add a little heat to it, turn it upside down, and essentially steam or iron it out. Don't get it too close to your greenery because, you know, some things are plastic and they'll melt. But look at that. We woke that flower right back up. Now, I started off cutting these because I thought they needed to be cut, but it I was reminded in my head that most of these are put together by just wrapping that brown, papery-looking stuff over them, and you can just simply pull them out. Do what you need to do to get yours apart. Now, I am not going to have this right in the center. I want it off to the side, so I'm just going to put my little pipe cleaners on one side. I'm using green because it's going to blend in a little better with the greenery on the wreath. And I'll just cut one in half and we'll make some little 
little hanger pieces to attach the paper down to the wreath. If you want to attach yours straight down on your wreath, you can certainly do that. Feel free to make it your own. That's what this channel is all about. But in my experience, putting hot glue on something thin and plastic, like the greenery that happens to be on this wreath, it's not silk, it's like a plastic sort of situation. It'll just melt that and it'll come off anyway. So doing it this way, I can attach down to the wreath form that is underneath the brown part and it'll stay right where it needs to be. Now that this is dry, I want to put these pieces together. See how you can still see the wood grain underneath, but it kind of has that shimmer and the light really pretty. And I like the idea of stacking these one on top of the other, almost graduated. And so I'm just going to use jute because it blends in. It doesn't, you know, get a lot of attention and I want the attention to be on the word. So I'm just going to tie this in two knots where I connect each piece and then cut off that little section right there that we don't need. Y'all, somehow in the process of cleaning and rearranging in my studio, and I mean it is a huge difference down there, thanks to my daughter who has been doing a lot of work down there. I have lost two pairs of scissors. I mean two scissors, and they're the ones that are the smaller ones that I can use to actually do small things. Uh, can't, can't even, can't find them. Want to say thank you really quickly also to the members of this channel who have made it possible for me to buy the microphone that I'm using today. It is new. It is, I just installed it last night, so hopefully we have a good crisp sound. I would love to know your opinion um, in the comments below if it sounds better to you today. All right, so we've got the next one ready. We're going to keep going along here. And I just showed you a moment ago how you can fix the end if your if your string or whatever you're using starts to fray. A little hot glue, you can fix that. All right, so to hang it off of the wreath, because again, we're not hot gluing, we're going to hang it. I just chose to use another piece of this jute to just tie off both ends. And then that's what we'll use to attach it to the wreath. And then since we put double knots in between each one, I'm going to continue with that same look by just putting a double knot here. And now I think that is precious. We're just going to set it aside and we can put down our sweet little Cupid. Or Angel, whatever, however you want to look at it. But it's a Cupid to me. Send in love. See how he's sitting on those little hearts? Oh, it's so cute. He's, he's precious. Now I'm going to attach it to the wreath form underneath, which is that brown part, the, the original circle before the greenery. And I'm not going to pull it too tight because it'll sink down in and squish our greenery, and I don't want that to happen. So now I'm going to find placement, and I almost it almost looks like the little Cupid's looking down at the love sign, right? I think that is adorable. So I'm just going to go behind him. Same thing, I'm going to kind of attach it, try to get it attached to a solid piece down there. And I'll just tie it in a double knot. Same thing over here. And I'm not too concerned. It, you're going to make a gap sometimes in your greenery when you're tying it on. But you can always re-fluff it. That's such a simple thing. Y'all, I encourage you not to give up on your work when you get started and you hit a, you hit a bump. I mean, there are happy accidents. And, and you just go with it. You just go with it. I've got another boo-boo in here. Um, that you're going to see close to the end of the video. And I'm going to show you how I rolled with it. I didn't even cut it out. Just rolled with it. All right, now to keep everything locked in place, I just added a little dot of glue and I still managed to knock it loose. So uh, I'll fix it again later. Okay. Now we always use clamps when we don't have enough fingers or hands to hold something. So we're going to keep going. I've torn these pieces apart. And since this wreath has that look of all the greenery going in one direction i'm going to continue that same look with these little wispy pieces and i chose these one because they're very pretty it's the only pick i could find when they were on clearance at joanne and it kind of reminds me of what's going on in the feathers on the back of the cupid so i thought it fit in very well with this project you know you don't have to use as much stuff as i do i'm always going to just put a whole bunch in there I like to show you step by step and then, you know, just tell you too that you can stop at any point that you want to stop on your projects. Just because I do a lot and have a lot going on, that's just my preference. But 
I encourage you to do as much or as little as you like. These videos are for inspiration and I just want to show you what you can do. Right? Always make it your own. Okay, so now I'm going to take these these uh, peach colored roses and I'm going to turn the greenery to make sure that for the most part we're looking at the front of the greenery and not the plastic backing. Sometimes there's really not much you can do short of just gluing it down but I'm, I'm just going to kind of go with it and move as much forward and toward the front as I can because I like that dark green color and I like the print. Um, these are just very well done. So I want the best part of them to be forward, right? Just like when we're dressing ourselves and we're getting ready to go out and do something, we want to put our best foot forward. So that's what I'm doing here, of course, on my crafts. Now, I love these all together. They almost look like a bunch of roses rather than cutting them apart and separating them. We're going to leave them all together. That's a little bouquet, right? Then I'm going to take these pieces and I'm just going to place them here and there and then they're so big there's enough underneath for me to take those pieces that are underneath and pluck them off and and use them in another place and you'll see me do that shortly i'm going to add these beautiful blue flowers and then i've got some more blue over there that i grabbed up that's really small that i found later and we're going to add those in there shortly I went ahead and added the greenery that we had from the blue flowers in there as well. And you can move things around. See, these are not glued down, so that makes it convenient. It gives it a little more um, options for you. See? A little more option. And by the way, if you're wondering why the longer pieces don't, why you see me just poking them in there, they're going into the wreath form that is underneath. So for the new folks and the new crafters, they're going into the wreath form under there. You can actually fit the wires down in there. So that's where they're going. And then for the pieces that are on plastic or look like they are shorter and can't be fed through there, I'll add a little hot glue and glue them in like the one I just did. Now I'm taking these little beautiful flyaway pieces of, we're going to call these wildflowers. And I'm going to just tuck them in here, there, continuing along with the beautiful blue that we already have going on in the project. And then underneath the edge, we're just going to carry this down and add some more of these little blue pieces here in front of the love and at the corner of the print and leaving enough space in the middle that I can build up some of those yellow pieces. and I can just add as many or as few as I want to over here until I get the look that I like. Now that's much better, I like that. Now I'm just gonna kinda weave them in and out. I'm going to kind of glue some things in place because for whatever reason, the glue did not play well with the paint that I used. So, you know, it would've worked with chalk paint. Now let's move on to the bow. I decided to use the sheer. So I've got the sheer bow, or the ribbon, and I've got about, it's over two feet of ribbon for sure. And I'm just going to make a very simple bow in my hand. You can see how I did that. You can go back and rewind and slow it down if you would like to. Then I'm going to tie it off with a little bit of jute because the jute is what I have available. So that's what I'm going to use. And then I'm going to take another piece that is about four inches longer than that one. I'm going to make the exact same bow, only it's going to be a little bit bigger. This ribbon holds a bow beautifully. It is wired. You're going to want to use wired for this. Then I'm just going to pull it down. And of course, we need to finish our ends. We don't want any raggedy frayed ends. So I'm just cutting them at a slant. You can do a dovetail or, you know, whatever you like here. I'm going to take another piece about, I think I had, I took what was left on the, the spool, I do believe, and I'm just going to fold it in half. So this looks like about 18, maybe 24 inches. I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to fold it over and then we're going to use this strip to go right in the middle. It's going to cover the jute and it is going to firmly attach it to the brown part of the wreath underneath. So I'm just tucking it in there, pushing it through with my fingers. Once I get it back there, I'll pull it up and then I'll tie it in a double knot. And then you can cut off any excess you might have in the back or you can just leave it there. 
I'm going to fluff the bow because, you know, you got to fluff those bows. And then try to give a little personality to the ribbon. You can decide, do you want it to flip up? Do you want it to flip down? Do you want to just have it swag down? Or do you want to make a curl in it? There's so many options with bows. But, uh, you know, do it your way in the way that you like it. And this is the final result. But you will get a better look at the very end of the video. Our next project is going to be a set of two decorative plates. We're going to use two types of Mod Podge. One of these is a gold glitter Mod Podge. And this one is a dishwasher proof Mod Podge. I have a brush that I got with my Mod Podge, of course. And then these are two plates that I have thrifted. One of them one of them is from Hobby Lobby and the other one, I don't know where that one was from. This came from a Timu paper pack and is like a scrapbook paper pack. And I've got lots of pretty options. This is another piece from that banner. Put your spectacles on, right? And then I'm going to cut this out, especially since I can't find my small scissors. I, I don't know. I don't know if my daughter's watching this video where are my scissors girl where are my scissors i do have a little crafter in my house too and she also likes to use my things so i may have to look over there on her table and see if she took my small scissors all right so i'm just going to cut out the little boy here with his valentines and i am going to put him on top of this scrap card book cardboard it came out of some things that I had ordered to uh, improve my channel this year so I saved those pieces I love to use those as backing and just for anything you can just use them for anything with hot glue you need to be sure that you work quickly to press that out so you get no lumps or ridges underneath and the reason I'm doing this is because I want him to have a little more weight and structure i want it to be where it's not bendable and it's a little easier to work with i'm going to use my finger sander and i'm going to go over the entire thing this is going to get any little roughness or it's going to smooth the edges i guess is an easy way to say it's going to smooth the edges and it will go through paper after i have done that i'm going to get my finger dauber and i'm going to get a little bit of wax and see there's a little scrap of that cardboard just going to dot it off and I'm going to go around the edges. Now you can see that the edges are kind of white when you first sand them. You can go back over them with a little bit of darkening. See there the difference? This is going to make it really stand out so much better. It's going to give a defined edge and really make it pop. So I like doing this and you're going to see this a lot in this in this video. I'm going to show you how to age things. Give you a lot of options in the video. Okay, you could always take a marker if you don't have, you know, some aging wax of some sort. You can always do the edges with a marker, but you're not going to get that look of shading around the edges without this wax or with some, maybe some um, brown paint that you water down. Wax is just such a good, it's just, I encourage you if you're going to be cheap on everything else or, or frugal, Please spend the money and get you some antiquing wax, especially if you watch my channel because I use it all the time. Okay, so we're going to let that little boy dry. I'm going to take advantage of the little holes in the sides of these plates, and I'm going to use this ribbon that I have, and this is thrifted ribbon, or possibly was given to me. Now see, sometimes I can't remember correctly because I have had several ladies give me large amounts of ribbons and crafting supplies that's where the wreath came from the wreath form uh several of those i've got a lot of things from other folks so this may have come from one of them but i'm just weaving that in and out using the stick to help me go down in in the holes if you're not able to get your fingers in there if it flips over just flip it back look at the back of it make sure everything is you know good then I'm just going to make a very simple bow right here. If you're not, if you don't have the dexterity and you have pain or vision problems, leave that string longer, make your bow, and then trim it off. Well, you got a little more room to work, right? I'm just slanting the little details just a little bit. Not, not anything major, just a little slant here. And I'm going to try to push that out of the way 
while we work on this little heart going in the middle. It is bigger than the inside circle, so we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to put it down with these little pop-up squares. You can get something similar to this at Dollar Tree. We're going to peel the little backs off, and then I'm going to try to center it underneath the bow, and then press right over where those foam squares are to hold it in place. He is a cutie pie. We don't very often get to see little boys, so I really wanted to kind of feature them, you know, give them a little space today. If you want to hang this on the wall rather than sitting on a plate stand, you can just take a piece of wire, and I've cut a little piece here. I'm going to go in and out in the same space below where that bow is. You won't even be able to see it in the front. The ribbon will go right down over it. Then I'm going to cross my two pieces over, twist them around. You can trim them off. And they just keep them low down to the plate where it's not very noticeable. And you'll be able to use that on your wall. What I'm going to do, in case you're worried about scratches on the wall, is pull that back through so that it goes under the ribbon on the front and the smooth side is on the back. You could also use some, maybe some command hooks on the inside of your secretary or anything that you might have that you put your decor on, maybe you showcase your decor on, and you could use a little command hook on the back and then hang this right off the wall of your little shelving or your cabinetry. All right, for the second one in this set, we are gonna use the bigger plate. I'm just gonna use this as a template. You see it fits perfectly down in there, and I'll use it to go on my piece of paper. I'm gonna take a pencil and lightly go around on the white side of the paper because I can see it and I don't have to worry about it showing if I go over the print. And I'm just gonna cut right over the line. Oh, that's so pretty. I love the look of this. Crafting magic, y'all. All right, we're gonna put some of that dishwasher Mod Podge on here. Now, the dishwasher safe Mod Podge is the option I chose for this, not because I intend to put it in the dishwasher, no, but because in my experience, it is very thick. It will cling to what you're using quickly and you don't have to worry about any bubbling or lines underneath. That's just my experience, but you do what you need to do. So you could actually use regular Mod Podge. Just be sure that you squeegee it out really well. I'm trying to hold it so I don't get it sliding around because I put a good coat in there. And I'm just going to use a little silicone spatula. Y'all, if you do not have fancy tools, go get something from the kitchen section. Silicone is great. It's easy to clean up. It's flexible. It's wonderful. I'm just going to use a heat tool and I'm going to go over here and give it a quick dry. But you can put yours aside and let it dry if you like. I'm going to put this down on another piece of the cardstock, or the cardboard rather, but this time I'm going to attach it down with that same Mod Podge because it was already in the brush. See, options y'all, you have options. Put it down in here, I'm going to press it down, I'm just lining it up on the edges, that's what I'm doing. And then I'm going to just use my little spatula here and support it with my finger and just squeegee it all out from the inside to the outside, pressing it down into that glue. It does take a second or two to uh, attach to the glue, but just, you know, work with it. And then I'm adding a little heat to it to make it dry quicker. If you don't have this, you can use a blow dryer. You, if you don't, you can use a fan. You could always set it aside, walk away, take a coffee break, right? Or get some water. We need more water this year. I drink a lot of coffee. Now I'm gonna cut each one of these out because they're like individual little pictures. And then I'll be choosing just a few of these. And then some I'll be putting aside for the next Valentine's video that I'm putting out. Then I'm gonna darken and age these just like you saw me do before. All around the edges because you know you sand these off if you need to. If not, you still got your cut marks and you want your edges to blend. The white part of the paper and the brown part in the back will look the same or barely be noticeable if you do this. Now I'm going to bring that toward the inside just a little bit to 
just age around the edges and you can clearly see the difference there. Just, it's almost like you're putting a shadow around the edge. Kind of mimics what's going on in those cards we used. Okay, and this is how this one's gonna look. Now, the plate is dry, so we get to start having a little bit of fun. I'm gonna shake this Mod Podge up because it's glitter in there and it will get kind of clumpy. My preferred method is a sponge brush for this because you can pounce it on instead of using a brush, which will, in my experience, rub it right back off. So I'm just gonna pounce this on all over my edges because I want this one to really have that beautiful shimmer or sparkle on it. Now y'all, this is very fine glitter. This is not something that's over the top crazy. It's not. And once it dries, it's just very, it almost gives it like a gold leaf effect. But you know, judge for yourself. And if you don't like it, you don't have to do it on yours, right? And I'm just gonna go over the edges of the cards once they're dried and just give them a little bit of that gold too. You see, just a little shimmer. It's really pretty. All right. And now I'm going to go on the inside and just give it a little bit. You're not going to really see a whole lot of what's going on under here because it's going to be covered. I've got two old ribbons or vintagey looking ribbons. One in a gold and one in a beautiful dusty pink. Or I think in the 90s, what did we call that? A dusty rose beautiful and it is sheer so I'm going to use both of them but there are two rows of little openings in this plate so this is the perfect opportunity to use both to use two ribbons I'm going to pull a bunch out I'm going to get a little stick here and I don't know if this this is a craft stick or a coffee stirrer stick I don't know I get so much from the thrift store that's not even in a package that I just scrape up off the bottom of the bin and if it looks like I could use it for crafting I'm going to bring it home but the good news is I share a lot of stuff, if that helps. Okay, now, once we get back around, you can see we've got our two pieces here. I'm going to overlap one underneath the other one, so they both come out the same spot. This is just to make it easier when we hang it. Now I'm going to start with the gold. And again, if your ribbon flips over, all you have to do is go to the back, use your little stick or whatever pokey tool you're using, and flip it back over. Easy. And I wouldn't stress about it anyway. I still, It's still pretty. You're still getting a representation of that color, right? Not everybody has 20-20 vision. I'm straining to see my screen right now as we speak. Because I'm not wearing my glasses. They're in the car. And they should be on my face. But that's another story. Got to get back to the eye doctor. Y'all, we've got to take care of ourselves in 2024. I have let too many things fall by the wayside. I'm about to get myself back in shape. Who's with me? All right, so once you get back around, I'm just going to go ahead and tie this one in a knot. And then I'm going to tie this one in a bow. Easy bow. This is an easy little bow, but leave your strings longer if you need a little more to work with while you're doing your projects. So I'm wondering, does anybody use a magnifier when they're doing their crafting, like the, the kind that attaches to the table? I'm thinking about getting something like that. Let me know what you think, if, you, if you've ever worked with one, what your experience was. Okay, so now the fun part, we get to arrange these on the plate. I get to decide right where I want to put these and it's really uh, it's sort of like scrapbooking. You just see what works. And I love an offset look. I love the look of something having dimension on it. It's different. You don't see everybody do this. And that's what makes things special, right? And it creates that extra shadowing in the background. So before you know exactly where you want your pieces to be, kind of lay them out and get an idea of what you think you might like. Then you can press them back right where they're... Right blah blah right where you would like for them to be i'm sorry y'all okay so now we're gonna just i'm just gonna tack those down to the edges and then add a little glue underneath it will stick well to the ribbon underneath so that's what i'm aiming for oftentimes hot glue will pop right off of a shiny surface like that plate i have a little card here and i'm just gonna 
pop off the little extras and add them here and there because they have a little gold edging. You can do this with the with the 3D card. You know, you can do this. And think, you buy one pack of cards, one pack of thank you cards, and you get all the extras. Now, mine came from the thrift store, but, you know, think outside of the box. You could also cut up a card, or you could drop it like I always like to do. Or you could use stickers. There are puffy stickers and 3D stickers at Dollar Tree that are gorgeous that you could use. Look at this. I really like this. I really like it a lot. And I think the two of these plates together make a very nice look. Okay, so now you can hang it with your ribbon if you would like to. Or you could use a piece of wire. And this is just the edge off of a wired ribbon that I deconstructed. I'm going to make a loop in the end. I'm going to pull it so there's a little knot. And then I'll feed it through the same hole where the hanger is. You can just cut that little ribbon down, cut the little tails off like I did. And then you have a little gold hanger and then you can hang it from the wall. Either way is good. The next project is going to be Cupid with Roses. So I pulled this off of a Christmas greenery piece that had all kinds of red and green and gold on it. I pulled it off because I knew that these beautiful dark roses were going to be perfect for Valentine's Day. Multi-purpose, y'all. Christmas stuff, some things can go right on over. I thrifted the little cherub. This came off of one of my candles. This is a piece of scrap foam. And this is a little candlestick that I have used before in another project. We're going to use a different shade of gold. This is glorious gold with cup and a chippy brush. All right, right now I've got my little Lazy Susan. We're going to put it under there just to kind of help me out. It's going to keep my table clean and make it easier when I'm turning this. Okay, you see how much I just loaded into the brush and then wiped off? That's all I'm going to use for a great portion of this. It looks really heavy right now, but what you're seeing is me just putting the paint onto it. I'm not leaving it this look. This is going to be me brushing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all over this, underneath the lip, the edge, everywhere. Then I barely add any more paint to the upper section. Okay, now I'm going to add some paint onto this top. does not have to be perfect most of this you are not going to see but I'm gonna color it gold and be sure you go the edges also and then I'm gonna add some E6000 once that's dried and some hot glue to the top of this candlestick and then we will apply this right on top of that candle top that hot glue is going to grab fast. It's going to hold it in place until that E6000 is dry. And look at that. It practically looks like it belongs there. All right, I'm going to use some of my mounting tape here. You can get this at Walmart. You can get it at Dollar Tree. It's alien tape, I think, at Walmart. Um, I mean, not Dollar Tree. At Timu is where I get mine. I found it fairly inexpensive there, so that's where I usually get mine. Then I'm going to go over it with some hot glue. Hot glue will eat away at your foam, so it needs to be something a little more permanent. Be sure that you really push it down into it, and then it is practically centered. We've got to find a way to stand this little cherub up. I'm going to add some hot glue on a pick that I have cut at a slant so it will fit right under the wings. I'm going to cut the stick down a little because I know I don't need all of that. Not quite sure the height yet, but... I know I don't need all of it. I'm going to trim it down a little bit more. Yes. Oh, y'all, this is not for the faint of heart. I had to add a little glue right to his bum to hold it in place at the right angle. Okay? And that is Gorilla Glue. And the glue gone. All right, so now I'm going to find his placement, and I'm going to stand him up in that foam. Stand him in it. Push his little toes into it. 
I'm going to go around this with a little bit of ribbon because if you don't, you might be able to see through your greenery and then you'll be able to see this white foam. You could start by simply using a green foam if you have that instead. This is my way of disguising it a bit. Although most of my flowers do cover it. Now I've pinned it in rather than gluing it with a floral pin. And I'm going to take my roses, which I have put back together and added a little piece of scrap stem to. And I'm going to shove them through this meshy ribbon right in the front. Okay, and we're going to do four of these. So I'm trying to space these out evenly around the foam. Add two more. And then the last one here. Now we are going to be adding the single roses that don't have greenery and we're going to add those in between and above where we added the ones with the greenery which is in the foam at the top right around that cute little cherub or cupid or angel baby or whatever you want to call him and there will be four of those so so far we have eight roses Mine are thrifted, like I said, but feel free to pick some up at Dollar Tree or wherever you have them. Or perhaps you'd like to use a different flower. I just thought this is beautiful for Valentine's Day. I have one piece left that I'm going to cut in three sections. And I'll be using this to add here and there to pop out of our flowers so that it doesn't look so flat. I feel like doing these things makes a little more of a natural look. See, now we can cover up the stick on the back. Then I'm going to turn him to each side to decide where we want the last piece to go. And then adding a little hot glue, we can place that in there. Now I want to add a bow to this. Now this is a little, little simple bow like we did before. So if you've mastered the other one, this is the exact same thing, but we're doing it with gold meshy ribbon. I'll flip it over and just tie it in the middle and this is just a little scrap of ribbon and I'm going to tie this around the candlestick in a place where it is seen but close enough up top that you could actually give something like this as a gorgeous Valentine's gift I know I'd love to have it I surely would I think handmade gifts are so sweet and so thoughtful because of the time and the effort that you put into it you know i love it and i think in crafting we show a little bit of our personality and the way we craft and it just makes it special but i know not everybody likes a handmade gift but i sure do all right so i'm putting slants here i know you can't see down there but it's okay and i'm also going to show you how you can kind of Give it a little something extra by making little tails. So these are like faux tails. I'm gonna cut like an eight inch piece and I'm going to cut a slant. This is just it doubled over and I've cut it in a slant. I'm gonna pinch it on the bottom. Pinch, I said pinch. The country's coming out. Country has come to town. I'll make a couple of these and add and you'll see it at the end. The next is going to be a heart sign. Love this one. So, of course, we're going to use our antiquing wax and a chippy brush. Another one of those beautiful banner pieces. And then this is like a wallpaper strip. And this is a heart that somebody else already DIY'd. I believe you can get something like this at Dollar Tree that is completely plain and you don't have to worry about painting over or removing anything. I'm going to measure out on this wallpaper that is from Timu. I'm going to measure out how much I need to cover it and then I am going to just kind of trim off the rest of it because I like to get those things out of my way. I've removed most of the paper and I'm going to add this down. A lot of times you can see through these papers so just be sure that you have a nice light background so you don't see a bunch of stuff underneath it, right? I'm going to start to peel up the backing. So you can see the print from the front through to the backing. So you know it's pretty thin. And I'm going to just take the heart and peel most of it off. I'm going to use, I think I put something on there to hold it. Yes, I did. Put a coaster on there. Just to give me an extra hand. See how I kind of walk my fingers off? 
and then I'll push this right where they connect drop it down press it into place it stayed nice and flat thankfully I'm just going to press it down a little bit and I'm going to cut off the excess this does not have to be really neat it doesn't have to be a very close cut because we are going to be sanding off the excess it works well Press it down with your hand, use a squeegee, use a credit card, use a spatula, something to get this flat where there are no bubbles and wrinkles in it. All right. Love the vintage look of this. Already love it, but it's a little too... Hmm. The color is not exactly how I like it, so I'm going to change that. But you see how easy this shears off? Just going down and away from it, you can pull that right off. Perfect. See the difference it makes? from here to this side, very defined. Now, I wanna darken this up, of course, because I've gotta give it more dimension. I don't want anything looking flat. I want it to look like it's truly something old. So I'm gonna go around it with just a uh, baby wipe, a damp baby wipe. This is gonna make it easier for me to move it, and it will also give me a little extra time to play around with this wax before it sets up. So I'm going to go around, all the way around the edges, all the way. I'm getting the very edge of the heart, plus I'm getting about an inch, maybe an inch and a half toward the inside of it. it. As it starts to dry, I'll kind of blend inward. So I'm going inward in circular motions to get the color the way I like it. Now when you're doing this with a baby wipe, if you get it too dark, you can quickly wipe it back off, right? I like the color of this. I think it looks good. See the difference? Yes. Now I'm just, because it's still damp, I'm just taking a chippy brush, a large one, and I'm just going to kind of play with that to give it almost a little bit of shaping. If you curve the brush, it puts the wax almost like, it's kind of hard for me to explain, y'all. Just take my word for it. But you can skip that step if you would like. Now I'm going to cut her out. I'm not going to leave the shading on her because we're doing something a little different. But she has a little foot down there. We want to make sure I don't cut her foot off. And I'm going to put her on that same piece of scrap cardboard we had. You see how convenient it is to have these scraps because we didn't have to buy it. And I've used it in several projects. Little hot glue. I'm going to get her placed down on here so that I can get it cut out. I'm going to do the same thing with the heart. And then I will cut around here. Preferably with some detailing scissors, but you know, you know. Then I'm going to take my finger sander and go all the way around. This is going to make the edges nice and smooth and make this look like one piece rather than a piece glued down to something else, right? You can also cut apart a cereal box and use that if you would like to give it a little bit of extra weight. You certainly can. Now the same thing here, we're going to go all around the edging, we're going to cover up all the white, and we're going to make this look a little more aged. And don't forget the inner parts like the neck and things like that. Then I'm going to dry it. I have a little piece that came off of a Dollar Tree thing here. I peeled it off, peeled off the front of it, and I'm just going to paint it white. And we're going to make a little dimensional heart. Once I've got it painted, I'm going to add on some wax. Y'all don't panic. It looks definitely worse before it gets better. Again, I'm using a baby wipe because it makes it easier for me to blend. Okay, blending. Blend it well. You can see how much blending I did on it. See the difference when the paper heart comes off? I think the paper hearts might have come from Dollar Tree one year. I'm not sure. Using a glue stick is by far the easiest way, but you got to be very gentle with this. The purple will disappear. It just shows me where I put the, the, the glue. And now I'm just going to pat that down on there and gently, gently use my finger to make sure that it is attached down. Add a little heat to it to glue it in place. And we want dimension here. So I'm going to just use a wood block on the back. You can use those building blocks from Dollar Tree if you want and start playing around with how we want to position this. I want to add this little heart right to this one. This gives a lot of dimension in this heart. We got three layers in this heart and I absolutely do love that. I'm going to take some little pieces of wood scraps that I have. They went to some type of a pop-up painting kit. I, I don't even know, but I keep these kind of things when I, you know, I just keep them. 
I don't go overboard. I mean, it does. it's not a crazy person's studio downstairs or anything. I have this stuff organized, okay? Believe it or not, it is organized. Organized chaos, still organized. I'm going to glue this right down on the back. And then I decided when I was doing this, you know what? This looks like a candy top, like a candy box top. So we're going to go with that and try to continue with that same look. Like this was a box of chocolates, right? Right? Couldn't this do? Couldn't this be so similar? So that's what we're going to make it. I'm just going to pull the wire right out of this wired ribbon. And I'm going to wrap it around. I pulled it out because it'll lay flatter. But you don't have to. You certainly don't have to. I'm going to do this at a slight slant. Why? Only because... Afterwards, I realized it was not completely even. So we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. We're going to say I intended for it to be that way, right? Yes. Now we can decide where we want things to be. And since I know I want to add a little bow somewhere on here, we're going to position her down a little bit, leaving some space for a bow. Her little skirt's kind of wispy and hanging off a little bit off the side. I love that. I love the dimension of it. And then because I used smaller blocks here, there's another layer of dimension. It's a little shorter, but still you can see the shadow around it. Now, very soon you're going to see a mistake. And let's focus on the good part. I'm going to make a two loop bow. And all I'm going to do is just loop this over. This is all I have left. So I'm trying to take advantage of it. And I'm just looping it over on itself. So there'll be two loops on the left, two loops on the right, and two tails. I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to cut through the wire. Just going to cut right through. It's going to bite through the wire and go right into the fabric. You don't want to go too far with this because your bows will fall apart. Same thing on this side. Some people call this an Olivia bow. Some people call this a notched bow. I do not know the original creator. There are a lot of opinions about that. We don't need to go into that here, do we? We don't. Now I'm going to put a piece of ribbon right in there. You can use a string for this. You don't have to use ribbon or you can use a zip tie, whatever you prefer. I'm just working with what I have, what's on the table. It's kind of a long video, so I want to be sure that I give you all the details, but give you all the goodness right you need the goodness you need the inspiration people have been asking me where's my valentine's where's the valentine's where's the valentine's i'm bringing it to you y'all i'm bringing it and more than one how about that that's right all right so now i'm going to pull these apart i'm going to pull these layers apart and oh bam pull the edge right off the ribbon this is old ribbon so i should have known to be a little more gentle but i wasn't but i'm thinking okay now what now what this is the only piece i have left so then I was like, you know what? Let's just pull all of those off. Let's just pull them off. And then it occurred to me, you know, you cut through the side, they can come completely out. Just pull every one of them out. And I did. Even off the tail part, I just pulled them off. Went with it. And it still looks pretty. And it's still a stiff enough ribbon that it's going to hold the shape of the bow. Happy little accidents. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Now I'm going to cut my tails, just going to dovetail these pieces. You won't necessarily see these. It depends on the type of ribbon you're using. Sometimes you can see the tails on my bows and sometimes you can't. But just to be on the safe side, I want to do it now rather than trying to do it after it is glued in place. All right, so now this is going to be the back of the bow. I'm going to take that one last piece of scrap that I had there. And I am going to fold it in half and then I'm going to dovetail it. So now we have this little thingy, this little piece, and we're going to work with it. I'm going to add some hot glue on the back of the bow. And I'm going to squinchy this up in the middle, press it down in there, and then a little bit of that will show when you put the bow in place on the top and the bottom, and they look like little faux tails. Oh yes, this was definitely a happy accident. I'm going to add some hot glue here and press it into place right up toward that top oh yes and now we're going to add some beautiful greenery on there yes i said greenery and i said beautiful again i did i'm going to glue this in place this was just a scrap off of some other those little roses that i have there i made sure when i chose those roses that they were in the same orangey red tone instead of a pinkish color because this is definitely more of a a different tone 
and I'm going to put this down right on there. You could use a dual, uh, jewel, you could use a button, you could use anything you like in this spot. So, so far, so good. I'm liking it. You could definitely stop here if that's something that you would like to do. But I decided I wanted to add a little bit of gold to it. You don't have to do this, y'all. I know I be doing too much sometimes, as the kids say. As the young folks say, I be doing too much. But I'm just going to add some of this on here, and then I'm going to blend it out. I'm not going to leave those sharp edges. I'm going to pull all of that toward the center. That's just going to kind of concentrate the majority of the gold to the outside when it starts to get sticky and dry just a bit. But then I'm going to also go over her little shoe. We're going to make her a little patent slipper that she's wearing, and we're going to do some black on the band around her hat. Just a little something extra, y'all. You know, just that extra flair. I felt like coloring that day, apparently. Look how relaxed I looked. Just chilling out on the table there. Just going to trace that up. Very easy to do. And as I put the glue down, I'm kind of rubbing the tip of it in there. Be sure, by the way, if you're using a bottle paint like this, that you burp it first like I did over there on the top of that used spool. Once I've gotten it blended out with my brush, I'm going to dry it and we're going to make a hanger. And I'm just using a scrap piece of ribbon with a little glue in the middle and I'm going to add it right in the top middle. I like that it has gold in it and it also has kind of that brownish tone. And that's that. Here are those five brand new Victorian Valentine's projects that we made. And we included the little boys in this one, didn't we? We've got some reds and some pinks. And you see that little red bubble? If you would click that, you can subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Let's me know I'm doing a good job. I want you to believe in yourself because I believe in you. Whether you're a new crafter or somebody who's been doing it forever or somebody who took time to be off and now you're back at it. Feel inspired. Thank you for being here today. Thank you to my members, my viewers, and all of my subscribers for everything that you do that makes my channel possible. All of the support you give, the comments you leave, the shares, the likes, they matter, they mean something, you mean something, and you matter to me. I hope you enjoyed these and found some inspiration, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!